Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on using Gauss elimination to solve systems of equations. And we found out that with Gauss elimination, there are two main processes when you're doing Gauss elimination. There is forward elimination, right? We found that we forwardly eliminate this matrix that we started with. And the objective of that is to find those three zeros at the uh, bottom left hand side, right? And after we go through the process of forward elimination, we go through the process of of backward substitution. Now this is actually called the naive or the simple Gauss elimination because it's actually blind to a problem that sometimes occurs in uh, some of the systems of equations that you encounter. And take this system of equation for instance and here's the augmented matrix and if you remember with Gauss elimination the first thing that we do is we create something called the factor and the factor that we created for say our first uh, elimination here was eliminating the zero was six right and six was this six a um a one two right divided by a one one and let's go to this matrix for instance what is a one two here this is one and a one one is zero so we have a problem of dividing by zero and in this case we can't actually perform forward elimination so how can we remedy this problem and we remedy this problem by a concept called partial pivoting, which is simply just swapping rows. And we do this based on a criteria. So we have row 1, 2, and 3. How do we know which one to swap where? And we're going to do it by a concept of the highest absolute value. So look at this first column here. We have 0, 1, and 5. And what the criteria is, we want the highest absolute value at the very top. So which one has the highest absolute value in these three is 5. So we want row 3 at the top here. And we take row 1 at the bottom. So this would be our swapping. And this is our first pivot, which we have here. Okay, and after we go through our first pivot, we go through our first forward elimination, which means basically creating the two zeros here. Uh, but in this specific uh, matrix, we already have a zero here. So the code does undergo um, a forward elimination for the third one. But since we already have the zero, you can find that after that initial forward elimination, there is no change to the third one because we already have that zero. But we also need to do a second uh, type of pivot. So in this case, to create those two, uh, those two zeros, we pivoted the first column here. But since we're also going to create a zero here, we have to pivot this column here for these bottom two rows. So we have this, say, 2.4, and we have this negative 3. And the criteria that we're following is the highest absolute value needs to be at the top. So the absolute value of 2.4 is 2.4. The absolute value of 3 is 3, which means we need to swap these two rows. This row is going to be so 3, 7, and 2 here. It's going to be 2.4, negative 1, and 2.6 over here. And you're going to have the form that we have over here after our second pivot. Okay, or second swapping, in other words. And after we're doing that, we go over to our final uh, elimination, which is creating the bottom uh, zero here. And after we're done, this is so at this point, we have done with with uh, the entire forward elimination process. And then we go to the second process of Gauss elimination, which is backward substitution, as we explained in the previous lesson. And we go th uh, through and get x3, x2, and x1. So the only thing that we're covering in this lesson is the concept of partial pivoting or swapping of rows to remedy the problem of dividing by zero. So now you know it conceptually. Okay, so how does this translate in terms of writing a code? So I actually blocked off the extra uh, code that you will be learning for this lesson um, from the code that you already learned in the previous lesson. So in the previous lesson, you learned how to define the empty arrays of A and X. You learned how to use a uh, nested loop to uh, import these values um, into VBA. And you also learned how to go undergo forward elimination and also how to undergo uh, backward substitution. So the only difference is this line of code or these few lines of code. This is the extra thing that you're learning in this lesson. Now the pivoting code is made up of two parts. So the first part here is to identify the largest absolute value in column one or and later in column two.
Now, we visually inspected, we said, okay, here, here's, this is zero, this is one, this is five. And by visually looking at this, we identified that the largest absolute value is five, which means row three needs to go up here and row one needs to be down here. So how do we do this? How do we um, identify the largest absolute value within a code? So the first thing we say is P is equal to K and what that means will become apparent later on because if P is not equal to A, this is when we actually go ahead and do the swapping. So the first thing I'm going to store uh, the first value which is in uh, the absolute value of AKK when K is 1. So A11 we're going to store 0 inside of the big. And then what we're, what this loop is doing over here, what it's doing is actually comparing this with these two, which is apparent from when k is 1, ii goes from 2 to 3. So it's going to loop twice. And this will become apparent as we're going to actually go through the code. So the first thing I want to do is I want to store a uh, a to 1, which is 1, inside of dummy. Okay, so I stored a11, which is zero inside of big, and I stored this one inside of the dummy. So let's actually go into this f statement. So the f statement says, is the dummy, in other words, a21, greater than the big, which is a11, is one greater than zero? And the answer is yes. So we're going to take whatever values inside the dummy and store it inside the big now right because up to this point one is the greatest number that we have so far and then we're going to say that p is equal to two and that what, what this tells us is is that our largest value right now is on the second row okay now we're going to go to the uh, second loop here and the second loop ii I is three right so we're going to say that my dummy is the absolute value of a31 which is now five right so we're gonna go through this if statement and we're gonna say is 5 greater than 1 and the answer is yes then we're gonna take this 5 and store it into the big so the biggest value that we have right now is the 5 and then we're gonna say that P is equal to 3 and again what does that indicate it indicates that our largest value is on the third row okay so now what is K here K is 1 and what is P P is 3, which means P is not equal to 3, which means swapping is uh, is needed. So let's actually talk about what if P is equal to 1. If P is equal to 1, that means the largest absolute value is at the first row, which means no swapping is needed. But in this case, since the largest is on the third row, swapping is in fact needed. Now, the second part of here, since we identified the largest absolute value and we identified it to be on the third row, let's actually go ahead and swap the rows, okay? So this is the criteria, if P is not equal to K, then. So what I want you to see here, we have uh, a loop here that goes from K to three, in other words, goes loops three times, and we have another code down here. So the loop that loops three times, what this does is, it's going to swap this five with the zero, this negative two with the negative three, this zero with the seven, and the code down here swaps this one with this one, okay? So let's go see how does this work. So for j is equal to one to three, so when k is equal to one, so now we have the dummy is equal to a three one. So basically we're gonna store the five inside of the dummy. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take um, a11, basically the zero, and we're going to put it in a31. Okay, so basically I took this five, I stored it somewhere else outside of the matrix, then I took the zero and replaced the five with it. So now the zero is over here. And then whatever I stored inside of the dummy, which is the five, I'm going to put it in a11. So I store the five here. So let's go again, what we what did we do here? I took this five, which is A31, and I stored it inside of the dummy, okay? Then I took this zero, and I stored it in, in, in A31. And then after that, I took whatever is in the dummy, and I stored it up here. And for the second loop, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take negative two, store it outside, then take this negative three, put it down here, then the negative two will be put up here. Okay, and for the third one, again, we're going to take this zero, store it outside, take this seven, uh, replace the zero with it here, then take that zero and put it back up here. And this is basically what those three loops do uh, here. 
And this one is basically, since it's not in a loop, because the only thing I want to do is I'm going to replace these two. Again, we're going to store this two inside of a dummy, which is basically A34, which is the address of this. So we're going to store this inside of a dummy. And then we're going to take um, A34, right, is equal to A14, right? So we're going to take this two uh, stored in here. And whatever's in the dummy, we're going to store it at A14, which is up here. Yeah, in this case, they're equal. But um, in some cases, of course, uh, they're not going to be equal. So this code is still needed. But in this case, you can see there, there was no need for them to be replaced. So that's really it for the uh, pivoting code. So this is the extra part that you learned. So this is no longer a naive gas elimination. This is an, a gas elimination that goes through assessing whether or not the, um, the system that you have is organized properly that it can smoothly go through a forward elimination and backward substitution. Right, because if we just uh, apply gas elimination from the get-go here, the code would not work. Right, it would not work. And actually, if you're doing it even on paper, it wouldn't work, because now you, when you're creating the factor, it's going to be one divided by zero, and that doesn't uh, doesn't work. So, kind of to recap what we've learned. Um, so, the first pivot is basically we look at this first column, right, and we identify what is the largest absolute value. And we identified this to be 5, so which means we need to replace 1 and 3. And we did this here, and this is the first pivot that we did. Then we undergone the first loop of the forward elimination, and basically the first loop creates those first two zeros. Then we went through the second uh, pivot, and basically the second pivot, since we're creating this zero using these two rows, right uh, we need to only we need to define whether or not we need to replace these well the absolute value of 3 is greater than the absolute value of 2.4 which means 3 needs to become 2 2 needs to become 3 and now this is the um, the uh, matrix that I have after that we go through the uh, final loop of forward elimination and we created the zero and I've also explained what uh, what entails a backward substitution and this way we get x3 x2 and x1. Now in terms of the coding, right, we found out that p is equal to k, this will identify whether or not uh, we uh, swapping is needed or not. We stored this first value inside of the big, right, and we go through these uh, two additional loops to compare this one with the zero and then this five with whatever the biggest of these two are. And this is what this did. And now after we go through that, we identified the largest absolute value. And if P is not equal to K, in other words, uh, the largest absolute value is not at the very top, we go through ahead and swapping. And swapping is very, very simple, right? Uh, the first loop here basically swaps these uh, three values that I have here. And the way it does that, it stores this five, for instance, in a dummy. And then it takes this zero, puts it down here, and whatever is in the dummy, it pastes it up here. And it takes this negative two, puts it in a dummy, then it takes this negative three, puts it down here, and whatever is in the dummy goes up here. And again, for the final loop, it takes this zero, puts it in a dummy, takes this seven, puts it down here, and whatever is in the dummy, which is the zero, puts it up, up here. OK, and you get this final form that you have here. And this code down here does uh, does it only for these two values. So it replaces this two with this two and this two with this two. Uh, so that's basically what is new in this um, in this uh, lesson. So let's go ahead and run the code. So if we do the uh, backward substitution x3, uh, you know, it's, it's very simple, right? It's just 4.2. Uh, divided by 4.6 and you get this number and given that you know x3 you go to this uh, equation and you get x2 which in this case is 1.463768 and given that you know x3 and x2 you can go ahead and calculate x um, x1 which was uh, 0.9855507 uh, and here are the values so this code is basically the only thing that you need to do is basically input the matrix, right? So I uh, this matrix is 10 plus i and 6 plus j, which corresponds to this. And that's the only input that you need to the code. It takes it, uh, undergoes, uh, undergoes the forward elimination with partial pivoting, then the backward substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and run the code. And if the code did, uh, um, if the if the code is written properly, I should get those three answers here. Uh, and also, it's uh, further validation that it 
did in fact go through proper pivoting. So I'm going to run the code. Okay, great. So we have x3 is uh, 0.913, this x2 1.463, and x1 is that. Okay, so up to this point, we have gone through uh, naive Gaussian elimination, and we found out that sometimes we have the problem of dividing by zero if the um, if the equations are not ordered properly, and we went through Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting. In future lessons, we're going to actually introduce a new topic called Gus Jordan, and later on, we're going to introduce another topic called LU decomposition. So we have two more uh, uh, systems of equations technique left for us to actually um, solve systems of equations effectively. Well, that's it for this lesson, and I will see you in the next lesson.